Respiration. The food material taken in during the process of nutrition is used in cells to provide energy for various life processes. Divers organisms do this in different ways. Some use oxygen to break down glucose completely into carbon dioxide and water. Some use other pathways that do not involve oxygen. In all cases, the first step is the breakdown of glucose, a 6-carbon molecule, into a 3-carbon molecule called pyruvate. This process takes place in the cytoplasm. Further, the pyruvate may be converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. The process of releasing energy from food is called respiration. When oxygen burns the food in the cells of the body to release energy, then carbon dioxide and water are produced as waste products which are to be eliminated from the body. The process of respiration involves taking in oxygen, of air, into the cells, using it for releasing energy by burning food, and then eliminating the waste products, carbon dioxide and water, from the body. The process of respiration can be written in the form of a word equation as Food plus oxygen give rise to carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Aerobic respiration. The respiration which uses oxygen is called aerobic respiration. It is called aerobic respiration because it uses air which contains oxygen. Aerobic means with air. In aerobic respiration, the glucose food is completely broken down into carbon dioxide and water by oxidation. Aerobic respiration produces a considerable amount of energy for use by the organism which gets stored in the ATP molecules. The breaking down of glucose, food, during aerobic respiration. Glucose process of glycolysis in cytoplasm give rise to pyruvate with oxygen give 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus 38 ATP molecule. Anaerobic respiration The respiration which takes place without oxygen is called anaerobic respiration. It is called anaerobic respiration because it takes place without air which contains oxygen. The microscopic organisms like yeast and some bacteria obtain energy by anaerobic respiration, which is called fermentation. During anaerobic respiration, one molecule of glucose produces only two energy-rich ATP molecules. A few organisms such as yeast plants and certain bacteria can obtain energy from food in the absence of oxygen by the process of anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration takes place in our muscles during vigorous physical exercise when oxygen gets used up faster in the muscle cells than can be supplied by the blood. When anaerobic respiration takes place in human muscles, then glucose, food, is converted into lactic acid with the release of a small amount of energy. The sudden buildup of lactic acid in our muscles during vigorous physical activity can cause muscular cramps. Respiration in plants. Like animals, plants also need energy. The plants get this energy by the process of respiration. Plants also use oxygen of air for respiration and release carbon dioxide. Thus, the respiration in plants also involves the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. So, oxygen and carbon dioxide are called respiratory gases. Respiration in leaves occurs during the daytime as well as at night. On the other hand, photosynthesis occurs only during the daytime. Due to this, the net gaseous exchange in the leaves of a plant is as follows. During daytime, when photosynthesis occurs, oxygen is produced. The leaves use some of this oxygen for respiration and the rest of oxygen diffuses out into air. Again, during daytime, Carbon dioxide produced by respiration is all used up in photosynthesis by leaves. Even more carbon dioxide is taken in from air. Thus, the net gas exchange in leaves during daytime is. Oxygen diffuses out and carbon dioxide diffuses in at night time, when no photosynthesis occurs and hence no oxygen is produced, oxygen from air diffuses into leaves to carry out respiration and carbon dioxide produced by respiration diffuses out into air. So, the net gas exchange in leaves at night is oxygen diffuses in and carbon dioxide diffuses out. Respiration in animals. The fish has special organs of breathing called gills. When water passes over the gills, the gills extract dissolved oxygen from this water. 
the water then goes out through the gill slits. Thus, the dissolved oxygen is extracted from water by the fish when it flows over the gills. The carbon dioxide produced by respiration is brought back by the blood into the gills for expelling into the surrounding water. The fish has no lungs like us, the gaseous exchange in fish takes place in the gills. So, the respiratory surface of a fish is the surface of its gills. Respiratory system in humans. The main organs of human respiratory system are nose, nasal passage, trachea, bronchi, lungs and diaphragm. The air for respiration is drawn into our body through the nostrils present in the nose. This air then goes into nasal passage. The nasal passage is separated from the mouth cavity. The nasal passage is lined with fine hair and mucus. The part of throat between the mouth and windpipe is called pharynx. From the nasal passage, air enters into pharynx and then goes into the windpipe. The trachea runs down the neck and divides into two smaller tubes called bronchi at its lower end. The two bronchi are connected to the two lungs. The lungs lie in the chest cavity or thoracic cavity which is separated from abdominal cavity by a muscular partition called diaphragm. The pouch-like air sacs at the ends of the smallest bronchioles are called alveoli, singular alveolus. The walls of alveoli are very thin and they are surrounded by very thin blood capillaries. During the breathing cycle, when air is taken in and let out, the lungs always contain a residual volume of air so that there is sufficient time for oxygen to be absorbed and for the carbon dioxide to be released. Transportation Transport is a life process in which a substance absorbed, or made, in one part of the body of an organism is carried to other parts of its body. Blood Blood is being a fluid connective tissue. Blood consists of a fluid medium called plasma in which the cells are suspended. Plasma transports food, carbon dioxide and nitrogenous wastes in dissolved form. Oxygen is carried by the red blood corpuscles. Many other substances like salts are also transported by the blood. Blood is a red colored liquid which circulates in our body. Blood is red because it contains a red pigment called hemoglobin in its red cells. Blood is a connective tissue. Blood consists of four things, plasma, red blood corpuscles, white blood corpuscles and platelets. Heart. The heart is a muscular organ. Because both oxygen and carbon dioxide have to be transported by the blood, the heart has different chambers to prevent the oxygen-rich blood from mixing with the blood containing carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide-rich blood has to reach the lungs for the carbon dioxide to be removed, and the oxygenated blood from the lungs has to be brought back to the heart. This oxygen-rich blood is then pumped to the rest of the body. The heart is roughly triangular in shape. It is made of special muscle called cardiac muscle. The heart has four compartments called chambers inside it. The upper two chambers of heart are called atria, singular atrium, and the lower two chambers of heart are called ventricles. The two atria receive blood from the two main veins and the two ventricles transport blood to the entire body and the lungs. The left atrium is connected to the left ventricle through a valve V1. Similarly, the right atrium is connected to the right ventricle through another valve V2. These valves prevent the backflow of blood into atria when the ventricles contract to pump blood out of the heart to the rest of the body. This is because when the ventricles contract, the valves V1 and V2 close automatically so that the blood may not go back into atria. The job of heart is to pump blood around our body. All the atria and ventricles of the heart contract and relax, expand, at appropriate times and make the heart behave like a pump. Since ventricles have to pump blood into various organs with high pressure, they have thicker walls than atria. A sheath of tissue called pericardium protects the muscular heart. The chambers of the heart are separated by a partition called septum. The tubes or blood vessels. The arteries, veins and capillaries are a kind of thin pipes, or tubes, through which blood flows in the body. Arteries, veins and capillaries are called blood vessels. 
Arteries are the thick walled blood vessels which carry blood from the heart to all the parts of the body. Arteries have thick walls because blood emerges from the heart under high pressure. The capillaries are thin walled and extremely narrow tubes or blood vessels which connect arteries to veins the exchange of various materials like oxygen, food, carbon dioxide, etc. between the blood and the body cells takes place through capillaries. Veins are the thin walled blood vessels which carry blood from all the parts of the body back to the heart. Veins do not need thick walls because the blood flowing through them is no longer under high pressure. The main difference between an artery and a vein is that an artery carries blood from the heart to the body organs whereas a vein carries blood from the body organs back to the heart. Blood pressure. The pressure at which blood is pumped around the body by the heart is called blood pressure. The blood pressure of a person is always expressed in the form of two values called systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. The maximum pressure at which the blood leaves the heart through the main artery, aorta, during contraction phase, is called the systolic pressure. This high pressure in the main artery maintains a steady flow of blood in all the arteries towards the capillaries. The minimum pressure in the arteries during the relaxation phase of heart is called the diastolic pressure. The value of diastolic pressure is always lower than that of the systolic pressure. The blood pressure of a person is expressed in terms of millimeters of mercury, which is written as mmHg. The normal blood pressure values are systolic pressure, 120 mmHg diastolic pressure, 80 mmHg. Blood pressure is measured with an instrument called sphygmomanometer. High blood pressure is also called hypertension and is caused by the constriction of arterioles, which results in increased resistance to blood flow. It can lead to the rupture of an artery and internal bleeding. Lymph There is another type of fluid also involved in transportation. This is called lymph or tissue fluid. Through the pores present in the walls of capillaries some amount of plasma, proteins and blood cells escape into intercellular spaces in the tissues to form the tissue fluid or lymph. It is similar to the plasma of blood but colorless and contains less protein. Lymph drains into lymphatic capillaries from the intercellular spaces, which join to form large lymph vessels that finally open into larger veins. Lymph carries digested and absorbed fat from intestine and drains excess fluid from extracellular space back into the blood. Transport in plants The plants have two transport systems, one xylem which carries water and minerals, and two phloem which carries the food materials which the plant makes. Phloem also carries the hormones made by the plants in their root and shoot tips. The transport of materials in a plant can be divided into two parts, transport of water and minerals in the plant, and transport of food and other substances, like hormones, in the plant. Transport of water. In xylem tissue, Vessels and tracheids of the roots, stems and leaves are interconnected to form a continuous system of water conducting channels reaching all parts of the plant. At the roots, cells in contact with the soil actively take up ions. This creates a difference in the concentration of these ions between the root and the soil. Water, therefore moves into the root from the soil to eliminate this difference. This means that there is steady movement of water into root xylem creating a column of water that is steadily pushed upwards. The plant has an adequate supply of water. The water which is lost through the stomata is replaced by water from the xylem vessels in the leaf. In fact, evaporation of water molecules from the cells of a leaf creates a suction which pulls water from the xylem cells of roots. The loss of water in the form of vapor from the aerial parts of the plant is known as transpiration. Transpiration helps in the absorption and upward movement of water and minerals dissolved in it from roots to the leaves. It also helps in temperature regulation. The effect of root pressure in transport of water is more important at night. During the day when the stomata are open, the transpiration pull becomes the major driving force in the movement of water in the xylem. Transport of food and other substances so far we have discussed the transport of water and minerals in plants. 
Now let us consider how the products of metabolic processes, particularly photosynthesis, are moved from leaves, where they are formed, to other parts of the plant. This transport of soluble products of photosynthesis is called translocation and it occurs in the part of the vascular tissue known as phloem. Besides the products of photosynthesis, the phloem transports amino acids and other substances. These substances are especially delivered to the storage organs of roots, fruits and seeds and to growing organs. The translocation of food and other substances takes place in the sieve tubes with the help of adjacent companion cells both in upward and downward directions. Unlike transport in xylem which can be largely explained by simple physical forces, the translocation in phloem is achieved by utilizing energy. Material like sucrose is transferred into phloem tissue using energy from ATP. This increases the osmotic pressure of the tissue causing water to move into it. This pressure moves the material in the phloem to tissues which have less pressure. This allows the phloem to move material according to the plant's needs. Excretion How organisms get rid of gaseous wastes generated during photosynthesis or respiration? Other metabolic activities generate nitrogenous materials which need to be removed. The biological process involved in the removal of these harmful metabolic wastes from the body is called excretion. Different organisms use varied strategies to do this. Many unicellular organisms remove these wastes by simple diffusion from the body surface into the surrounding water. Excretion in human beings. The excretory system of human beings includes a pair of kidneys, a pair of ureters, a urinary bladder and a urethra. Kidneys are located in the abdomen, one on either side of the backbone. Urine produced in the kidneys passes through the ureters into the urinary bladder where it is stored until it is released through the urethra. How is urine produced? The purpose of making urine is to filter out waste products from the blood. Just as CO2 is removed from the blood in the lungs, nitrogenous waste such as urea or uric acid are removed from blood in the kidneys. It is then no surprise that the basic filtration unit in the kidneys, like in the lungs, is a cluster of very thin-walled blood capillaries. Each capillary cluster in the kidney is associated with the cup-shaped end of a coil tube called Bowman's capsule that collects the filtrate. Each kidney has large numbers of these filtration units called nephrons packed close together. Some substances in the initial filtrate, such as glucose, amino acids, Salts and a major amount of water are selectively reabsorbed as the urine flows along the tube. The amount of water reabsorbed depends on how much excess water there is in the body and on how much of dissolved waste there is to be excreted. The urine forming in each kidney eventually enters a long tube, the ureter, which connects the kidneys with the urinary bladder. Urine is stored in the urinary bladder until the pressure of the expanded bladder leads to the urge to pass it out through the urethra. The bladder is muscular, so it is under nervous control. As a result, we can usually control the urge to urinate. Excretion in plants The plants get rid of gaseous waste products through stomata in leaves and lenticels in stems. The plants get rid of stored solid and liquid wastes by the shading of leaves, peeling of bark and felling of fruits. The plants get rid of wastes by secreting them in the form of gums and resins. Plants also excrete some waste substances into the soil around them.